Welcome to Releasing Trauma, a Survivor's Podcast. I am your host, Tracy Osborne. I am a survivor of emotional bullying, rape, sexual assault, domestic abuse, and grief. After losing my husband in 2019, I set off on a new adventure to help other women release their trauma and create a life they can cherish. Each week, I will feature a guest expert or a survivor to share their stories, tips, wisdom, and more. The goal is so that you can take away even just the smallest nugget of information you can use in your life right now to make a change and to remind you that you're not alone. There is life after trauma, and you can move from victim to thriver and create a life you can cherish. This week's episode is a replay from the Thriving Through the Holidays Summit. Hi, welcome to another session of Thriving Through the Holidays. I am your host, Tracy Osborne. With me today is the lovely Ann Lauren, who just recently got a haircut, and I have to say, I absolutely love how short it is. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, I am a sucker. I love short hair. It's the greatest. Anyway, <laughs> it's just so easy to take care of. Yes. Anne is an author, artist, and alchemist. She shares her story of childhood trauma through writing and public speaking as a medium to express the significant intersections and urgent demands between spirituality, healing, and justice on individual and collective levels. She also dabbles in intuitive painting, tinkers on the piano, travels when she can, sings at the top of her lungs in the shower, and pretends that she's funny. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. I'm so happy to be here. I absolutely love your bio. That that just cracks me up. Who wrote that? <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't do that? <laughs> I think we all sing at the top of our lungs in the shower because that's I mean, not the best acoustics. Yeah, it's low risk, high reward, you know. Very, very much so. <laughs> so today we are talking on the language of healing. And I can't wait to dive into this topic. Um, you know, let's just go ahead and start by telling us what you mean by the language of healing. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so just a little bit of my background story. Um, I am a childhood incest and illness survivor. I was sexually abused by three men in my family and then, um, also had grand mal seizures for the first five years of my life, as well as Hirschsprung's disease, which is a digestive uh, disease that required surgery. Um, so by the time I was 22, I was catatonic. My system just shut down from too much stress. And uh, it took me two years to kind of reclaim the memories of incest. I had forgotten them. And then to really start to understand the impact of childhood illness on um, the system as an adult and how it can affect your health later in life. Uh, and then it's taken me now 10 years after that to like find a new healthy baseline um, where I am fully functioning, my brain, body, and being are all kind of con continuing to learn how to work harmoniously together um, after years and years of um, growing up in a violent home and being sick. Um, so in that process, I learned so much about healing, obviously, but particularly that it has a unique language. Um, especially, I started writing two years ago, uh, hashtag me too, really initiated um, this strong desire in me to share my recovery story. I felt like there were so many narratives about sexual violence um, uh, being shared globally, which was, which was so important. Um, I didn't hear as many narratives around recovery, around the opportunity for healing. And so my recovery in that moment just felt so much bigger than me. And I had this like scream, this like intense desire to share it. And so I started a blog and then, um, eventually kind of started an organization and then started publishing on, on other pretty large platforms. Um, one really learning, like, how do I communicate the complexity of healing, um, the complexity of psychosomatic symptoms, um, the complexity of kind of poly victimization, right? Being a victim victim of both illness and incest, right. um, as well as various systemic injustices, right, that help um, or that continue to hurt us. Um, and like what works and what doesn't and what helps and what doesn't. And what I found was that often I would encounter these incantations, Tracy, and I don't know if you've experienced this, but like little phrases that just seem to like open me up. Have you experienced that? Um, you know, yeah. 
I think so. Um, especially once I started started really working with forgiveness and Ho'oponopono, those four little phrases really just kind of do amazing wonders when I say them. And I just kind of repeat them as little chants in my head. Exactly. So that's kind of what I found as I started to, um, as I read other people's art or as I wrote my own art or as I read through magazines or listen to podcasts or listen to audiobooks, I would find people would kind of weave words in a way that really freed me, um, helped me to understand trauma, um, helped me to release it, helped me to realize healing, helped me to integrate my past, helped me to initiate kind of my desires for the future. There were like these phrases that just like opened, hidden or locked or secret parts of me Um, and so the more I kind of, um, came in touch with those phrases, the more I realized how important they were, um, kind of these incantations or mantras, um, and how they've really served me in healing. And so as a writer, um, and someone who survived, you know, way too much trauma, it's just something that I want to share with people is both, um, I think this theory, this idea of these magical incantations that can really open you up, but also like, how do you find them, you know? Right. So can you, um, can you give us some examples of, of the incantations that you have found that work for you? Yeah. So throughout my healing journey, it's been a long road. Um, there have been a lot of them. And one of them um, is Antonio Machado um, wrote this beautiful poem and, and it's translated from Spanish, but the phrase is traveler. There is no road. You create the road by walking. And that kind of began my healing process. Um, especially because, you know, 10 years ago, trauma informed physicians were really hard to find. And it was really hard to um, kind of piece together how the trauma was affecting my brain, my body, my being. And I was kind of responsible for like, like, figuring out where the dots were with all my symptoms and like how to connect them. Like that was kind of all on me. So this idea that like, I am creating this road by walking it um, was this beautiful uh, kind of introduction into what the reality of my healing is going to be like. Now, 10 years later, I um, have gone on these wonderful retreats and whatnot, where all of those dots were connected for people. And I'm like, oh, that's amazing. You know, so they're, their um, healing journey is going to look a lot different than mine. I think hashtag me too really inspired um, kind of uh, and made kind of being trauma informed cool. And so a lot more people are, um, are getting those certifications, which is just awesome. Mm -hmm. I hope it's, it's not just kind of a phase that fades off after time um, because it is so important to be trauma informed. One of my favorite phrases is, um, you can't trip over what's behind you. Oh, I love that. Because I tend to live in the past. I I, I get stuck in my past and want to recreate the past into the future. So if I keep telling myself, you can't trip over what's behind you, that reminds me, look forward, stop looking backwards. Yeah. And it rewires your brain to stop, to stop doing that too. Right. Which is so much the work of healing. If you we're traumatized, particularly within developmental phases of life, is that we have to kind of reteach our brain to, to be present. Right, right. Some other phrases that, um, well, the Ho'oponopono that I use, it's, um, you know, it's just very simple. It's, it's, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Hmm. And I just repeat those in my, in my head over and over and over and over again. And it is amazing how cleansing that is um as i work on the forgiveness part of my journey which is kind of where i'm at right now is dealing with a lot of forgiveness yeah, <laughs> a I lot of that. forgiveness um but it's forgiveness of myself yeah, and the more i forgive myself the more i am finally able to let go and eventually i guess in a way forgive those who have done harm or done wrong against me yeah um more more it's just I've been able to just let go of the emotions tied around it totally just make yourself clear of it I love yeah absolutely absolutely so um my new uh mantra that I've loved is from uh Sumon Kidd's new book the book of longing have you read the book of longing or heard of it 
It's beautiful. Um, her main character's name is Anna and she is a writer and she, um, she writes, bless the largeness inside me, no matter how I fear it. Uh, so oh. that has, that really honors like these big feelings I have um, as a trauma survivor, as kind of a, an empowered feminist, as someone who wants to live a really big life and doesn't know how to do it. Um, and as someone who feels really unsafe in the world as, you know, again, a woman and a survivor and um, uh, all those things that I, I both have a lot of desire and a lot of fear. And so I love that, that prayer that she, that, that she speaks uh, is that, you know, bless the largeness and, and bless my fear. And here we go, you know? So. Yeah, I mean, fear is, fear is perfectly normal. I just got attacked by a kitten. Fear is perfectly <laughs> normal and, and very valid. Yeah. Um, as long as we don't let it take control. Totally. You know, um, one of the, one of my favorite things that I like to talk about is that movie Inside Out. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, it's a good one. Love that movie. And, um, and so when I'm talking to people about their emotions, I, I use that movie as a reference. It's, you know, fear has his place. He has his, his time at the controls, but it's limited. I mean, look yeah. what happened when he took over. All hell broke loose, right? <laughs> um, or no, I'm sorry, that was anger. But fear is even worse. Yeah. Um, you know, you just give him, give him his time at the controls because fear really just means be cautious, right. be wary, right? It, it's it's not something to be afraid of. <laughs> it's just yeah. it's, and it's really it's being cautious about. It's, I'm sorry, let me interrupt. No, no, no. I'm, I, no, I was just saying it's just something to be cautious about. Yeah, and especially if, you know, again, if you've experienced trauma, your fear um, survivor brain, your limbic system is going to be more sensitive to, uh, to a fear response. And so I find being like competent and compassionate with myself is really important in those times that it's like, I understand why I'm reacting the way I'm reacting and I don't have to give in to it, right? Like, I can be compassionate, but also kind of keep my frontal cortex, my rational brain in the conversation and be like, I'm in control. I get why you're freaking out, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like both hands. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll say something like, um, you know, I thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Thank you for making me aware that we're about to embark on something that I need to be cautious about. I love that. Um, I, you know, I, I hear you, I acknowledge you, got it. I'm, you know, go away. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, but I find by doing that, it allows me to stay in control and fear doesn't get louder and louder and louder. It's been heard that. already. So you're creating yep. incantations as we speak. You're like opening me. I'm like, oh yes, I, that's exactly, I could totally relate. <laughs> I guess I am sitting here creating as we talk. That's right. That happens. I want to talk a little bit um, because you are a writer about the power of writing, the power of journaling, because that is one of the biggest tools that I teach and that I have my clients do is journal. So I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Yeah. You know, um, there's so much kind of information about, uh, neurology and how writing can really help um, your brain process things better. Um, so there's this kind of like neurological benefit to like doing something physical that helps you process your thoughts. There's also um, the, the reality that uh, making a, a story, a very complex story linear is very hard. And often people who have experienced trauma have a really hard time um, telling their story from start to finish. Uh, and making it into like something chronological or a line or making sense of it. Um, and so journaling, um, one, can be a really great way to create that narrative for yourself. And no matter how long it takes, it doesn't matter. You know, like just keep trying. Even in my own writing process, I remember the first time Elite Daily reached out to me and wanted me to write um, an article for this big group of articles they were doing called back in your body. Um, and they're like, it has to be 2000 words. And I was like, how do I get this in 2000 words? Like my story is so complicated. It's 34 years. Like I can't tell this in 2000 words. And I did it right. Like she taught me how to do it. And then since then I can, I can get it now down to like 
1000 words, 500 words, and I'm just getting better and better at it. Um, which means I'm clearer, right? Like my brain is clearer. It can make sense of my history faster. Um, uh, which I just think can be so important to healing. Also though, there's something so beautiful about like free writing. Um, so opposed to kind of the linear model, there's something so important about just like getting all of what's happening in your head. And often there's a lot happening in your head. If you're a trauma survivor, just getting it on paper, like getting it out of yourself and it doesn't have to be organized and it doesn't have to make sense. And it like, it doesn't even have to, to be, you know, you can mix languages if you're, if you're multilingual, like it doesn't have to in any way be ordered. And, and sometimes like, that's how I find these incantations that like really serve me is by just letting my creative brain write without rules and see what happens. I'm being attacked by a kitten, so give me one second here. I'm going to get rid of her. There she goes. <laughs> it's really hard to stay focused and stay professional when you've got a, t- a kitten attacking everything on your desk, and you're like, hmm, hmm, hmm. I know, I can imagine. I mean, I'm listening. I was still listening. Don't, don't get me wrong, but... Uh, <laughs> I, you know, and I, I love what you're saying. I love the, the multilingual, you know, you hear these people talking and they'll talk in English and then they'll talk in Spanish or whatever, and they mix it all together. Absolutely. Do it the same way. Um, yeah, however you're you know, right the working. same way. I was talking to somebody earlier and I like free flow. Well, I, I, I take that back. I don't like free flow because I like to be in control. Right. Um, And so free flow is very hard for me. But what I find is that when I do just put pen to paper and and just not try and control what comes out, amazing things come out. Isn't that beautiful? That's kind of when I write my best. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So, well, this has been fun. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm sorry that the kitten kept distracting us or distracting me a little bit. But this has been great. I, You know, language has such a strong place in our healing journeys. Yeah. Uh, the words we say to ourselves, the words we allow others to say to us. Right. Um, very powerful stuff. Yeah. And that's something that I wanted to mention too, is um, there's a lot of narratives around healing that have kind of been passed down to gener- from generation to generation. And sometimes I think those narratives, which are kind of like old, they're like, incantations of generations past don't they're not evolving as quickly as we are or as like the science is um and so I just want to encourage people to like let them go if they don't serve you you know like if you find if you hear an incantation or a healing narrative that doesn't suit you like don't use it and then create one that does either through your own writing like you were saying Tracy or through through reading or through talking to a friend and like taking notes when they say something that really opens you up, you know? Um, but we don't have to hold on to these old narratives. And I think that, um, there's a lot of need for evolution within healing frameworks. And I'm really excited to see, um, what kind of the survivors of the next generation, the language that we create and the incantations we come up with, uh, in order to make healing more effective with the new information that we have. Oh, wow. I love that. I've never, I haven't thought too much about the incantations of the past or the sayings of the past, but it it does. It makes sense. They're the past. Yeah. And you're right. They don't necessarily work anymore. Right. And they were born of a time where they did, which is great, but we've evolved. So like, let's let our phrases evolve with us. Let's let our words evolve with us. I love it. I love it. Be creators of your destiny. Amen. Your own future. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on this. And I had a pleasure talking with you. Thanks, Tracy. It was an honor. And for those of you joining us, thank you so much for joining us. We will talk to you in the next session.